following presentation covers both Memco switches produced by Morpac, type EA and EAB disconnect switches. The following presentation shows an installation set up for demonstration purposes only and is not a live installation. The spacing between the phases may not be correct. The assembly shown has an optional ground switch installed for the particular model. The switches are identical in function and only differ in the materials used to construct certain current carrying parts. Both types have silver to copper contacts or silver to silver when specified. The remaining parts are essentially aluminum on the type EA, while copper and bronze are used on type EAB. Note that all products from Morpac are thoroughly tested for operation and inspected through a quality control process prior to packaging and shipping. When receiving the switch or switches prior to signing off shippers paperwork, inspect entire crate for significant damage, as well as making sure the accessory package is sealed and intact. Once visual inspection is complete, release the shipper and open the crate to retrieve the accessory package and its contents. Therein, you should find several parts along with an inventory list and applicable accessories. Verify using the inventory list as cross-reference that you have received all components as stated. If anything is missing, please notify Morpac immediately. Do not remove the switch itself at this time. Leave it intact within the crate for protection until it is ready to be installed. Phases are shipped, mounted on their associated base, and already have been factory adjusted for the major adjustments in function. Generally speaking, only slight adjustment may be needed to compensate for the addition of insulator stacks or the three-phase adjustment for group operation. The key points to observe in this testing phase are Making sure when phases close, they turn shut with an overturn or locking of the blade of approximately 0 to 2 degrees. If a phase or phases are not closing properly, there may be a need of some individual adjustment as follows. Lateral inline distancing to ensure that the silver contacts do not exceed or miss the contacts by more than one quarter inch. The lateral travel to adjust the position is done by adjusting the single insulator under the contact loop via the elongated mounting slots at the base of the insulator stacks. Loosening the bolts and moving the single insulator forward or backward may be necessary. However, please note, adjustment of this nature is rare as this is preset at the factory. Adjusting the level of a phase by tilting the second insulator that carries the phase armature axle. In rare cases, the phase itself may be out of alignment due to bolts loosening in transport. If this is the case, one can adjust the second insulator's base by adjusting the nuts on the mounting bolts. This process requires loosening and tightening bolts to make vertical tilt adjustments. This is one of the adjustments that may also help achieve the 0 to 2 degree overturn required on the closed position of the phase. Adjusting the closing height of a phase. When checking the closed position of the phase, the phase should sit tight and approximately 0 to 2 degrees over center between the two receiving connectors or the jaw on each side. The gap between the blade bumper and the actual phase while looking at the end view should not exceed one half inch. If adjustment needs to be made to accomplish this distance, the adjustment is made by turning the phase's connecting link as shown. Assuming you have mounted and installed all three phases of the switch and aligned them correctly by making sure they are parallel to each other and set at the same position laterally and are fully closed, the installation of the interface pipe that connects the three phases for operation to the outboard bearing crank should easily slide into the clevises of each phase. It is best, and recommended, to do this with all phases in the closed position. Simply slide the pipe through each clevis until all phases are tied together. 
Once complete insertion has occurred, tighten the bolts on each clevis, but do not yet insert or tighten the piercing set screws. It is important to note that the insertion or tightening of the piercing set screws will be the final step and will be done later. Connect your outboard bearing crank mechanism to the interface pipe and get ready for operation of the switch and its three phases. This is best done using the following method. When connecting the outboard bearing crank pipe to the interface pipe, it is best to do this while all phases are in the closed position. As an initial configuration, the outboard bearing crank pipe should be slid into the outboard bearing clevis so that the position of the outboard bearing crank is in an over toggle closed position as well. Note that the position of the outboard bearing in the closed state is determined whether your phase connection pipe runs inboard or outboard on your installation. In our demonstration installation, it is on the inboard side. Also note that the outboard bearing crank pipe literally could touch the edge of the outboard crank wishbone and in essence lock in either situation with the only difference being that they are 180 degrees apart. In either case, it will not be necessary to cut or shorten the outboard bearing crank pipe. As a quick overview of this process, you will be making adjustments in three possible locations to achieve a proper working mechanism. They are 1. The clevises on each phase 2. The outboard crank radius adjustment, if necessary. This is commonly set at the factory, but may be adjusted as needed. And number 3. The swing handle stop adjustments. All three of these adjustments will allow for proper operation of the entire switch. It is important to note through this process that visual inspection during this process is extremely important as one does not want to overstress any component by force. Relying purely on the feeling of resistance at the swing handle is not advised as this can be and usually is very deceiving and may cause damage to various components on the switch or linkages throughout. Make a trial opening while being careful not to overstress the linkages. The goal is to get all three phases to open up to a 92 degree position and close properly with the gap being 0 to 1 half inch while also being overturned by approximately 0 to 2 degree in the closed position. This is achieved by several clevis adjustments on each phase. After adjustments are made, the outboard crank should over toggle in both the closed and open positions, in essence lock itself into place as shown. At the same time, the swing handle should achieve a 180 degree swing plus 1 to 3 degrees to compensate for the over toggle in both the open and closed positions. Do several trial opening and closing actions while monitoring all components for stress. Do not force as this can and most likely will damage components. Once the clevises are tightened on all three phases, test the opening and closing while making sure all three phases operate synchronously. Things to look for are the 0 to 2 degree overturn, locking, and full closure as well as the closed position height relative to the blade bumper or 0 to 1 half inch gap. In the open position, the phases should all achieve a 92 degree position if installed horizontally. For vertical installs, the opening should achieve 70 degrees. Do a few trial closings, adjusting the linkage as necessary until all three phases reach the full closed position and open positions. Do not set or alter the radius of the outboard bearing crank yet. Ensure that on each phase, when in the closed position, the coordination of the crank stop and the parts that restrict blade rotation have at least a 1 8 inch gap. Coordinate open position stops in a similar manner for all phases. Blade stops have been set at the factory for approximately 92 degrees in the open position so that the blades lean back about 2 degrees. While doing a trial opening, be careful not to overstress the linkages if the open position stops engage before a complete 180 degree turn of the crank. 
As you progress, it is important to note that the position of the outboard crank in either open or closed status should literally over toggle and hence lock into place. For more or less travel of the swing handle and to achieve the over toggle of the outboard crank, the adjustment must be made by changing the radius of the outboard crank. This is only necessary should final adjustments be necessary. As stated, this is usually already preset at the factory. Start with the closed position and mark or adjust the first radial stop. Then proceed to the open position and mark or rotate the second stop to the correct position. Repeat these steps as necessary until proper adjustments are achieved. Tighten the U-bolts on the clevis on the outboard crank to finalize the open and closed positions. Once you have achieved the proper travel on the phases, the outboard crank over toggle in both the open and closed positions, the swing handle rotation of 180 degrees, and all clevises as well as any outboard crank adjustments being fully tightened down, you are now ready for the final step. Make sure the phases are all fully closed. Retrieve the drill guide bolt from the white satchel that is included within the accessory parts. Locate each phase's pipe connection clevis, the outboard crank clevis, and the swing handle, and follow this step by step for each piercing set screw. Remove the piercing set screw from the clevis. Insert the drill guide bolt into the piercing screw hole as this will now help cleanly guide your 5 16 inch drill bit. Drill your hole completely into the pipe. Remove the drill guide bolt and reinsert the piercing set screw and tighten firmly using a wrench. Repeat these steps for each phase clevis as well as the outboard crank clevis and the swing handle. Congratulations! You have now successfully installed a multi-phase switch bank and are ready for operation.